Hello again, another compare between the 924 and the 1054 uh, older generation, but still a very good scope. Um, someone asked me why why you you work with a scope instead of work with, working with a logic analyzer. Well, the simple answer is, well, if you have a nice signal like this thing, a transmit and a receive, you see both channel you see a decoding that seems to be fine all bytes are fine but sometimes well here's the kind of noise that you get on one of the traces and you see something on the other receives a signal and some if you zoom on it well you you clearly see that there is something wrong with the instrument that generates some noise and that noise completely mangled the the bits on the other can also this signal if you have a logic analyzer you won't be able to see it but with a scope you would be able to see if it's if all the, the bits are clean and this is the thing that we need to do with an analog scope i will try to capture a, a long packet to show you what i mean so stop it here so as long as you have enough sampling this is five mega sample per second you could zoom on it and see if you clearly see each individual bits clear and if you have a complete uh, packet then you could capture with the same sampling rate uh, and you will be able to analyze each packet but now instead of using pass fail what we will use is the utility of recording but recording everything uh, you turn this thing on and if we move down to that record option well you could set uh, depending on the memory and the that you have and the uh, sampling rate you could set this thing to right now it's 10 set to maximum it will capture 52 packets let's reduce this thing a little bit so it won't take too much time so let's say another 10 go back go to this thing and we simply have to press record so each packet will be stored in memory and we'll worry about the, rec the decoding later on so it's then 10 so we got those packet okay let's try to work with the decoding so Matt, decode one. Oh, decode is turned off, so you cannot operate with that. There's the same kind of feature again. Uh, you cannot activate both things in the same time. So utility, record, turn, uh, you pick the packet that you want. So let's try to figure one of those. You could simply play until we get something interesting. Let's say we work with the, uh, I'm not lucky enough to have, well, let's use a long packet for the fun of it. Okay, turn this thing off. Now all the other nine packets are lost. The remaining item in memory is the one that you see on the, on the display. And now you could work with, again, the zoom feature. So you have the entire packet on the top. You could now zoom to a small section somewhere. Uh, let's move it to somewhere next to this. Zoom a little bit. Then you could activate the decode. Turn the first one. Matt decode second one. And uh, since we got the possibility with the 1054, we could use the ASCII not yet on the uh, on the new scope because there is uh, some something fishy with the ASCII character that take too much time so now we got something synchronized we'll get one packet and of course because we turn off the feature of recording utility record record feature is off all the other packets are lost but at least you got one on the display so if you want to work back you need to 
restart the recording again and, and do this uh, long path of working with the instrument. How does it work with the new one? Well, it's, it's a lot nicer. Uh, for, I have to adjust my camera here. Either I look at it or either I work with it. So you activate first the decoding because it's it's available. Could turn that thing on, decode number two, turn that thing on. And we could also play with the zoom, zoom function, turn that thing on. And once the zoom is there, you see that all the parquets are decoding fine. And now just zoom on a similar section, I would say. Let's look at the end of the packet this time. So the end of the packet is uh, always with carriage return line feed. Too much stuff in to overlap here. So we get decimal or hexadecimal display. But uh, if you try ASCII, it will it will fail. So we are ready, and simultaneously we can activate the recording feature. Again, it depends on the um, sampling rate. So I'm equivalent with uh, 2.5 instead of 5 me uh, mega sample per second. But uh, we got more memory. And just for the sake of it, I will only pick equivalent of 10 packets. And we're ready to record. All the feeds are activated in the same time, so it's a lot nicer to work with compared to the old 1054. So you just wait until we got all the packets. So now the packets are recorded, you could minimize and now you could play with the, the recording. Of course you could activate the, uh, the table, but uh, let's move this thing just a little bit so we could see everything in the same time sadly we need to click again on this thing when it disappears I don't know how to make it reappear again we are at the beginning and I got a nice display here you could go back and that now you could pick the the time it takes so we could uh, slow this thing down but basically we could quickly operate over it so let's say we put one second of delay, go back to the beginning, and then use click. Each packet will appear one after the other. So it's a lot nicer on the new scope, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, we didn't use any triggering feature, we just captured the entirety of, of, the, of the stream. And, and and now we could look at both the analog signal if it's clean or not so if you got a packet of interest here you could zoom on it and and work to see if for one reason or the other the packet is not fine so if you, uh, one strange thing if you use the cursor to move to another another packet you you could see only, clearly see the packet, but if you change the scaling, that's another feature that is, I would say, not polished yet. You have to move back and forth one packet and then it displays it. Uh, again, not a life-threatening feature bug, but uh, probably something that they need to, uh, Regal need to polish over time. Thank you.